Here's a 1967 Zenith AM FM 4 transistor AM FM clock radio. It's in pretty nice cosmetic shape. And for a 4 transistor circuit, these little Zeniths perform fairly well. Although this one has a little problem we need to take care of. It plays, but as you can hear, it has some filter capacitor hum. Average of 250. Uh, yes, it's true. You can take simple steps. Yeah, the filter capacitors fail in these solid state sets, just like they do in the tube sets, and the symptom is basically the same. The only difference in the tube sets, you have to wait to hear the hum. In the solid state sets, you get the hum instantly. And here's the back of the radio and the bottom of the radio showing the model tag and transistor layout diagram. Now this is a model number X278W looks like. Well X prefix would be 1967 but the chassis is a 4NT 23Z3 or 23Z2 excuse me well, the N in the chassis number means that this chassis was first used in the 1966 models. Okay, let's open the back up and see what we've got. Okay, here's the chassis. It's pretty compact in here. Uh, you can see there's a good bit of metal, but the main chassis itself is on a little printed circuit board. And here's the filter capacitor that's bad and needs to be replaced. And also... We know at least the speaker is Japanese. There's probably other foreign parts in this set. By the mid-60s, foreign parts were creeping into the manufacture of these radios, even though Zenith was still making its table radios in the United States at that point. But obviously they were using some foreign components. I think about 1970 or 71 was probably the last year for any type of American-made solid-state Zenith table radio. The Transoceanics might have been made in USA a little longer. I know I've got a 72 Zenith clock radio by my bed that was made in Korea, and even though it gets the job done, it's nowhere near the quality that these older Zeniths were. Okay, let's replace the filter capacitor and see if we can get rid of that hum. And here's the chassis removed from the cabinet. And in order to remove the chassis, I had to unsolder the wires from the speaker. This is not exactly the easiest chassis to get out and work on, but it has to be done, so here it is. Okay, we have the capacitor replaced. And no more hum. How about that? American immigrants have years of unfiled tax returns. Have a federal for WHAS or online at WHAS.com. By the way, ladies, are reporting construction delays that could affect tens of thousands. Light. 
外しの Well, there seems to be nothing wrong with this radio in terms of sensitivity. Okay. Okay, and here are the new filter caps installed. We use three modern capacitors to replace the three section can a 100 microfarad, 150 volt, an 80 microfarad, 50 volt, and a 20 microfarad, 50 volt. Well, I didn't have 80s and 20s at 50 volts, so I used an 82 at 200 and a 33 at 160, and it works just fine. Uh, Due to the way this chassis is designed, I really couldn't mount these the way I would normally do it, so I just have everything soldered in place with heat shrink tubing over the leads to prevent any shorts. And I have the capacitors uh, tied to the tied to the metal heat sink there. Well, actually, it's not the heat sink for the output transistor. It's the uh, aluminum mounting plate where the original capacitor was mounted. And one other word of caution when working on any of these plastic radios from any brand, whether they be tube or solid state, that use these plastic chassis mounting studs that are molded into the cabinet. After this many years, this old plastic tends to become brittle and it will crack very easily. So when you are removing the screws or reinstalling the chassis mounting screws, you want to be very careful tighten them very slowly and don't over tighten because those studs will crack on you. In fact one of the studs that holds the speaker in cracked so currently all that's holding the speaker in is one screw so I'm going to have to get some JB Weld or something to uh, mount that speaker in a little bit better. And Basically this old filter capacitor is of the uh, cardboard tube type the only difference, they have it stuck down inside of a metal can. But yep, it's bad. And there's some out of town classic country station. I really don't know where that's from. But there you go. My 1967 Zenith. Four transistor clock radio. Prepared and ready to go.